Hey guys, this is a teardown of a Phantom V12 high-speed camera. Uh, unfortunately, this camera does not work as it is missing the image sensor. And I knew that when I bought it, I took a risk. I'm hoping that there are, uh, the rest of the boards are still in here. Anyway, this is a uh, 1280 by 800 resolution camera. It'll do, I believe, what, 6200 frames per second at full resolution. And of course, higher uh, frame rates at lower resolutions. Uh, it's got the same... Uh, the connectors on the back has got the same capture connector as the old uh, Phantom V4. Uh, v I think this uh, this connector is used on pretty much all the cameras in their line. Uh, two HD-SDI outputs, uh, power input 20 to 36 volts, uh, frame sync. This one has Ethernet for communication. I think that's serial and uh, component video viewfinder. This one has much more cooling than the other uh, Phantom V5 we looked at before. It's got a fan that blows air somehow down the side and out these vents. A little bit odd that this this, this vent, uh, so you can push it in and touch the fan. I kind of expected a bit better on something this expensive. I think this sold new something around $60,000 or so. Anyway, let's open it up and see what's inside. Hmm, a little bit leery of this strap that holds the top, or holds the camera up, or it works as a handle because it's just the Velcro and I figure that kind of could fall off easily in your drop your super expensive camera. But, oh, that looks like it's going to come apart easy. And... Aw, oh, fail! There's nothing in it. No boards at all. Oh well. I guess we'll, well, we'll tear it down and see the mechanical construction at least. See if we can see anything interesting. Oh, this, well, there is one board. The uh, board with the connectors on it. Anyway, let's see how it's built at least. So, clearly one of the major issues in this design was heat, because all of the internal boards are mounted on these cards, which, uh, these seem to be alum aluminum extrusions, and they have heat sinks down the edge, and the fan on the back blows air around them, through, and then out through these little holes on the side panel. This is actually a pretty good design, because it keeps all of the cooling air off of the cards, like it doesn't blow the air directly over the cards, so the, uh, atmospheric contaminants don't get onto them. They've also had some little things like as the, where the cards join, there's these little S-shaped curves which uh, sort of make a harder path for water and things to get, and dust to get into the uh, body of the camera, which is nice. I'm not sure um, how many cards this had. It had obviously at least six based on the number of these uh, heatsink plates, but it looks like it's possible they could mount a PCB on the top and the bottom of each one, so there could have been as many as 12 cards in this. Based on the data sheet, uh, it said a power was, uh, the power supply is 90 watts, so this does dissipate a good uh, amount of heat. So the image sensor would have mounted onto this card. Uh, this goes in sort of like into here. Uh, I'm not sure if this camera had a thermoelectric cooler or Peltier device to cool the image sensor. I know some of the newer ones do. This one doesn't seem to have enough heat sinking to really have that, although I guess it's sort of marginal. There's no real, they didn't pay any attention to thermal coupling from this to the side heat sink, so I don't think it did. Yeah, the connections must have come over, and there maybe there was another board in here that connected to all of the cards, or it might have been, actually, it would, probably would have been via cables. So, connecting between the cards, uh, there's board to board connectors, which obviously go through these holes. Not sure if these, because these don't go all the way through. It seems that some of these boards have been put in backwards, or they swapped sides for some reason. As usual on something this expensive, the machining is really, really nice. These are almost certainly machined out of blocks of solid aluminum. And the machining marks, I think, on these are really quite beautiful. On the camera front, uh, according to the spec sheet, this camera has a shutter that can come in front of the sensor to do black calibrations without having to put a cap on the lens. This one I believe has a Nikon F mount on it. It doesn't look like this camera you could get a C mount, although I guess they could make one that was sort of recessed into here because the C mount has to be sort of in this position, much closer to the image sensor. There's a little, it almost looks like a thread, but it's sort of like a polygon, almost a polygonal thread around there. I'm not sure what that is for. I wonder if that was... It's like a light 
something for light leakage, but it definitely sort of looks like a thread. I'm curious what that's for. So unfortunately, the only board we're going to be looking at is this connector board. Yeah, VRI 2008 PH12 Con Rev C, and another sticker saying Rev 1. Yes, yeah, has sort of doesn't have too much. Has some I/O filtering stuff here near the general I/O uh, connector with some uh, EMI filters, probably ESD protection or uh, comparators or something. The two DVI channels have uh, these chips. What are these? These are GS1528A. Those are almost certainly uh, HD HDSDI trans uh, transmitters. And you can see some uh, differential pairs coming down to the main connector. And then, well, just a few e pairs, twisted pairs for Ethernet or diff pairs, and then some other stuff for the serial line. So yeah, not particularly, not particularly interesting. The board is very thick on this. Looks like it's uh, 2.4, yeah, probably about 2.4 millimeters or so. I'm curious, they, I can't see them needing that for a number of layers. I mean, they, I can't see any reason he couldn't route this board in four layers. So I'm not sure why. Well, it must have been just for structural uh, structural integrity. On the other side, there's a an octal bus driver, probably just drive some of the I.O. stuff, and a bunch of passives over here. Also a few jumper links on this, and this one they've just crammed a, a jumper on the wrong way, or on sideways, to join two diagonal pins. That's not so nice. That, I think, is where the fan plugs in. It appears that the printing on this was done simply by uh, laser etching it away on a laser cutter. If you look carefully you can see diagonal lines moving in sort of in this direction uh, on that logo. And it seems the other, the printing around the connectors was done the same way and then they just filled it in with black paint. So sort of a nice way of doing uh, permanent lettering on something like this that's painted. I was wondering if this fan was one of those super powerful, screaming like a jet engine at takeoff thrust fans like they have on some of the new cameras, but it doesn't seem to be, no, it's just a pretty normal uh, fan, draws about uh, one and a half or two watts or so. Yeah, some of the fans on the newer cameras, the uh, V25 series, are just screaming like uh, server fans, like those Delta, super powerful Delta fans you find in servers, they're just, they're just screaming at full speed all the time, which is quite annoying. So I hope you enjoyed that Phantom V12 teardown epic fail. If you want to see an actual teardown of one of these cameras that had, actually has stuff in it, go check out the Phantom V4 and Phantom V5 teardowns that are on the screen right now. Anyway, hope you found this video at least somewhat interesting. Thanks for watching!